It'll be one to go this time, bye. Coming to the green, buddy, coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, 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 take, 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 go, 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 go. Get your motor running. And Steve Richards of PR. And Greg, could you first, got two questions. First, you're back in the Nationwide car next week at uh, New Hampshire. Talk about your chances there in the Nationwide race, the flat track program. Yeah, I uh, have to be, you know, up front with you on the, the Nationwide stuff. I think that, that you know, like the um, new car, Roush Fenway has slipped a little bit behind the rest of the competition on the uh, Nationwide cars. Um, you know, and it's a whole combination. It's not any one thing. I think that they're beating us a little bit on downforce and aerodynamics. They're beating us a little bit on the engine. You know, they're beating us a little bit on on coil binding in the in the front suspension area. You know, and it's obvious. Carl is a perfect example of of why and how we're struggling because you know that was the one of the premier teams and they're running you know 16th to lap down. And uh, we're we're all struggling a little bit. Uh, it's just where we focused our effort and a lot of our put our eggs in one basket. We worked really hard on this this uh, new car, and we we realized that we need to work harder on the nationwide car. And competition level keeps stepping up over there, which doesn't help us. You know, it keeps getting tougher and tougher. And uh, when you get really really good cars, it it's obvious it doesn't matter who they put in them. You know, from uh, Joey Logano to Denny Hamlin to Tony Stewart to Kyle Busch, they've all run extremely well. And uh, the 88 car's running really good, too. So uh, we're off a little bit. I'm, I love driving those cars. I'm looking forward to racing there. Um, they're certainly not as much fun as they used to be after they took the, the engine away uh, from them. Um, that has taken a lot of the racing. Uh, from those cars, but uh, I realize they want to make the engines last longer, make it more economical uh, for the teams for for uh, engine expense. But uh, you know, I'm I'm looking forward to running loud, and it's it's a fun track. But uh, I don't know that we'll be a you know contender for the win. Certainly, a top five car, and and like I said, you always got to be in the top five to win. So we're capable of winning, but we're probably not going to. Blow their socks off. Can you just talk about the next four weeks where you're going to try to do your part to help the folks in the Midwest recover? Yeah, what? I mean, uh, you know, it's an ongoing thing with uh, 3M and American Red Cross. They certainly, um, you, you know, 3M put the American Red Cross back on the TV panel of uh, the car for the next four weeks with the 1-800 number. Um, you know, it's. Uh, I was reading the USA Today this morning and and uh, reading the paper and. It's amazing the, the amount of devastation in that area. And uh, I think we all need to, to pitch in and do our part to try and help all those folks. I mean, it's just so overwhelming. It's such a big, it's kind of like Hurricane Katrina all over again, you know, only different. So uh, it seems like almost same magnitude or, or worse. So um, I, I'm excited for 3M they, they, and the American Red Cross. They've become good partners. And hopefully uh, with the race car, they can get that word out there for all the folks to kind of pitch in. Don, uh, Greg, this is not this is not going to be a complaint against the COT, but it is 101 degrees. Um, I was wondering why it's so damn hot. It's <laughs> glad you said that. I thought it was just me getting lazy or something. Uh, I mean, is heat is heat an issue, and how can you deal with that for 110 laps on Sunday? Yeah, it's uh, definitely an issue. Um, it is hot inside those cars. Uh, and, and I was doing an interview this morning or talking to some folks about, you know, I can't really say that this car is any hotter than the old car, unless you brought the old car out here for me to run 10 laps in and then let me run 10 laps in that one. You know, I, I just don't know. It feels hot in the old car. It feels hot in the new car. So, um, but it is going to be hot. I remember a couple years ago, last year wasn't so bad. Two years ago it was like this, and uh, there were some guys, you know, having trouble in, in the seat getting hot. But um, my, I tell you, my, my gas pedal foot's burning up, you know, hot. And I, that's probably one of the first for me in a long time to have, you know, my, my foot hot. So definitely your feet are hot inside the car. and The car's hot everywhere, and it, and it will be an issue. 
All right, let's go back to the deadline room for a question over there. Just one second. Greg, on a lighter note, and I, I apologize for this, but my fishing columnist of the newspaper asked me to ask this question. Do you plan to go fishing here in this area this week? And want to know if, if you have gone fishing at all in this area in recent years. Um, I did some uh, I did some fly fishing in uh, northern part of California, um, but I haven't done any around here. And I'm going uh, fishing with my dad at my place in Mexico uh, after this race for a few days. So. That was probably a good guess on your part that uh, I'm going to sneak off for a couple of days and uh, do a little fishing. Looking forward to it. I haven't seen my dad since uh, the Phoenix race in November. He's been uh, there ever since. So uh, looking forward to going back and uh, you're going down there on Sunday and spend some time. Uh, hi, uh, Debbie Arrington, Sacramento V. Um, in a, another kind of offbeat question, uh, fans are really feeling the pinch with the tough economy and the high gas prices. Um, do the drivers talk about the high gas prices at all, or does, does it affect affect the drivers? I mean, you guys, you know, get the gas from Sunoco, but you know, do you guys uh, feel this issue too? Yeah, you don't want to get me started on gas prices. I guess it's. Uh, I think it's BS the, the what our economy is going through because of the gas price. Well, I mean it's not. I mean anybody's going to go through it when gas is 4.50 a gallon. Um, I don't I don't feel there's merit for it or reason. Uh, they blamed it on Hurricane Katrina and then they then they blamed it on some other stuff. And I think it's just a way to charge us more money for fuel. And yeah, it does affect the drivers. Um, we had a Ford appearance last week in, in Detroit. And uh, gas was eight dollars and ninety-five cents a gallon for our airplane, and then out here it's seven dollars and fifty cents a gallon, and we used to pay about two dollars a gallon. So our gas has gone from two dollars a gallon to eight dollars a gallon, where fuel the pumps gone from two to four. You know, and uh, it's just getting ridiculously expensive. Uh, you know, unfortunately, our schedule—it's a luxury. At yet, at the same time, it's kind of mandatory for us to have private transportation because, you know, we need, we got to get to all of our commitments and, and places. So um, it's sort of a necessary evil, but it's one of our biggest expenses uh, that we have or that I have, or that all of us have. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's astronomically expensive, you know. It's approaching spending as much money as you have earn on a weekend when you have to fly, you know, five and a half hours, you know, or 11 hours on, uh, you know, something that burns that much fuel. All right, let's check back in the deadline room one more time. Any questions over there? No questions. We're all set. All right, back to Bob. A couple more. We need to wrap it up. Um, I'll go back to your contract one more time. Um, is, is 3M, I mean, is that who you're dealing with as far as sponsor negotiations, or are there any other new sponsors that you're talking to? I don't know. Uh, I don't know who they've got on the hook. I think that uh, I think that 3M is involved um, in the deal, but uh, I know that's one of the details that we're finalizing. And uh, we'll probably have an answer for you for sure next week at Loudon. All right. <clears throat> Last one up here, we'll go to Tom. Greg, just to follow up on my early question about streaks, do you think this year's champion is going to be somebody who wins four or five races in the chase, but maybe has a couple DNFs, or somebody who just goes through and maybe does you know, nine top fives and a one top ten. Is it going to be speed or consistency? You know, it's so hard to predict uh, what the future is going to bring, but certainly uh, consistency over the years has been the best. You know, whoever's the most consistent week after week has typically, you know, been the one to prevail. Um, we made a huge jump in the points. You know, and we hadn't won a race, so just being real, real consistent. And uh, the main thing is, is not not having a 40th place finish in the chase. That's the biggest thing. You know, the guy that can avoid that 43rd place finish uh, and, and runs in the top 10, I think, is going to be the guy that that's going to come out on the deal. I don't think that the four wins and he crashes twice is is going to going to make it happen.